Rishi Sunak saying that he wants the UK to be a global hub for cryptocurrencies. Is that a good thing? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Liam. Um, you know, I attended the speech yesterday at the summit myself. Um, overall, yes, I think it's a good thing. I think I was struck mainly by the buzz in the room immediately after the speech. Um, I think everyone recognizes, in the industry at least, that this is by far the clearest signal the government has ever given, um, that crypto is welcome as both a technology and an industry. Um, I think as a whole, the speech was also quite in touch, refreshingly so, with the industry's challenges in the UK to date. You know, the industry's existed here in the UK for about 10 years. It has not all been rosy. Um, you know, Mr. Glenn acknowledged challenges like the UK's temporary crypto regime, um, applying static law, as he called it, to new technology. You know, generally, he acknowledged how difficult it's been for crypto firms and regulators um, you know, without a larger crypto framework to create a safe ecosystem that can compete with other countries. I thought the speech was very refreshing. Curtis, you mentioned there John Glenn, who is, of course, UK uh, Economic Secretary to the Treasury, uh, uh, one of Rishi Sunak's ministerial colleagues at the Treasury. Dominic, I know it's always frustrating for you talking about Bitcoin on television, given how much you know about it, given how long you followed the Bitcoin story. But let me just put this to you, and maybe you can knock these views down, because, of course, you're a huge proponent of Bitcoin. So Simon French, who's a pretty respected economist at Panmore Gordon, he suggested the Treasury's announcement that it was going to allow NFTs to be issued through the Royal Mint came three days late because it should have been an April fool. Julian Jessup, a very respected economist, a friend of the show, he's often on the money. He said, what on earth is the point of this? Tulip Sadiq, Labour's shadow economic secretary to the Treasury, John Glenn's opposition shadow, called the move a poorly judged gimmick. Why are they wrong? Well, can I just start by picking up on something that Curtis said there? And that'll sort of answer your question. Curtis I, I, I admire your, your admiration for British policymakers, but I'm afraid this feels very much like hot air to me. I've heard it all before. I remember, I think it was probably 2015, maybe 2016, George Osborne, the Chancellor then, making a big deal about the fact that he got some Bitcoins from a Bitcoin ATM in Canary Wharf. The UK was going to be the global centre of, of, of crypto technology all this sort of what now we can see was basically hot air because within a year or two of, of George Osborne making exactly the same noises that Rishi Sunak has just made, um, we had the FCA banning, that's the Financial Conduct Authority, banning all forms of crypto derivatives, which means, for example, it was poss impossible for ordinary investors to buy um, crypto ETFs, if you like, or companies that dealt in this kind of thing. And so, you know, you had on the one hand, all this noise from the Chancellor, and then on the other hand, the actual actions that the FCA took made it very difficult for, for crypto firms to operate in this company and for ordinary investors to get exposure to it. And then if you want a sort of example of the total incoherence and inconsistency at the heart of UK policymaking, you've got the Governor of the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey, who, by the way, is presiding over a policy that has inflation, real inflation north of 10% and interest rates at about a quarter of a percent. So ordinary sterling holders are using, losing less than 10% of the value of their money per year. We have Andrew Bailey saying that cryptocurrencies are dangerous, that they have no intrinsic value. I mean, come on. And then he's saying, if you want to invest in Bitcoin, be prepared to lose all your money. And only this week, he's saying that um, cryptocurrencies are the front line for scams. Now, do you know, Mr. Andrew Bailey, what is the most used currency for illegal activity? It is the US dollar. Now, who is calling for the banning of the US dollar based on that? So there is a total incoherence. Rishi Sunak saying one thing, probably trying to get a little bit of popularity because his his popularity ratings have plummeted. Andrew Bailey saying something else. The FCA are doing something else. It is hot air and incoherence. 
And it, as it, for the um, the NFT, just very, very quickly, Lee, I'm sorry, I know I'm wittering on. Uh, as for the NFT, it's basically just a gimmick. <laughs> Here we have, never seen before on British television, it's Ting versus Frisbee, it's two cyber currency <laughs> titans slugging it out. Max, well, we're old men in their way. What does it all mean? Well... As I understand it, if we get into the world where uh, cryptocurrencies fall under the wing of governments, what is the point? Yeah, because the, the whole point, point of them is they're not controlled, controlled by, by government. government. So you can't print more cryptocurrencies. You can't debase them in that way. So you, you start off with the government putting a long shadow over them, and then you start getting them interfering, and then eventually they become government currencies, at which point they disappear. So uh, I, I totally agree with, with Dominic. I mean, you know, that's... But, uh, I, I agree with what he says, but then I also think, well, actually, we, do we, why do we want Britain or any other government to, to be exercising or attract uh, control over cryptocurrencies or, uh, uh, or any sort of influence? Actually, we don't. Let's just go back to Curtis Ting. Curtis, you know, we're proud of Dominic Frisbee. He's a rabble rouser. He's a, he's a fabulous commentator. You're, you're, a, you're a serious guy. Maybe you, he thinks you're cuddling up to ministers a little bit too much. It's a bit too cosy. Why don't you... You know, tell us what you really think, Curtis. <laughs> there. You know, frankly, um, I don't disagree with uh, with your view of how, you know, every cycle or two, there's definitely political gestures made to the crypto industry. This time, though, I don't know about 2016. This time, six years on, I think it might be a little bit different. And the difference is simply, I don't know that the UK government has much of a choice. Um, across the channel, you have Europe making serious inroads on a new markets and crypto assets framework that is really like deeply looking at how to create and foster um, a sustainable crypto industry. Back in the U.S., you have serious discussions going on, crypto caucuses forming about how to make the U.S. the most attractive crypto hub. So, you know, the difference may be from 2016, where this wasn't really a hot topic amongst various serious regulators, is that now it is. And so, you know, as much as I applaud the speech yesterday and the gestures that were made, and of course, we're going to, as an industry, wait to see how... Um, how the pen gets put to paper. Um, we also recognize that the UK may also simply not have a choice but to engage seriously at this point. 